Good morning on this first Sunday in Lent as we make our way to the cross. I invite you to meditate upon the words of our opening hymn, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, and those of you at home, please join in singing. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. I invite you to stand or kneel. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The reading this morning <clears throat> is from uh, the book of Genesis, the ninth uh, chapter. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, 
As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you and the earth. And when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, the sun is peeking out. It's been raining, but I'm wondering if there's a rainbow out there. Over these past few months, I have seen the most glorious rainbows. My apartment faces sunrise with a Malka view, and it seems that in this challenging COVID year, there have been far more rainbows than usual, and double rainbows at that. Low horizon rainbows and high arching rainbows both. They don't last long. The shower clouds have been moving through at a pretty good clip, but the presence of those rainbows has been a most welcome sight. I like to think that the increased frequency is God's way of reassuring us that even though our times are challenging, God is with us, and God will lead us into the future. The first reading, of course, is where the rainbow makes its appearance in the Bible. The story is a classic, a favorite of kids and adults alike, and ripe for the imagination. A boat bobbing along the top of an earth submerged under water, with at least two of every imaginable kind of animal cohabitating with Noah and his family. Many clever people have, have had great fun with this story. Like the note to Noah from the unicorns. Dear Noah, we could have sworn you said the ark wasn't leaving till five. Sincerely, unicorns. Or this insightful observation. Noah was a brave man to sail in a wooden boat 
with two termites. Or the elephant getting off the ark who was heard saying to the other, some cruise, it rained for the entire trip. But of course, it's the spiritual significance of this story that we are interested in. From the very beginning, Genesis was a story of God's efforts to deal with the twisting, warping effects of human rebellion, which we call sin. Finally, in divine disgust, God resolved to settle the problem once and for all by ditching the whole creation experiment and starting over. Noah and his immediate family, along with two of every kind of creature, would be retained to be part of creation act two. Noah was said to be righteous and a blameless man in the eyes of God. He and his family were the hope of a new start, a new beginning. And when dry land appeared again, God even made a covenant, an oath with Noah and his descendants to come, that never again would God destroy all of creation in such a way. But this new beginning was not the end of humanity's or God's woes. No sooner had Noah gotten off the boat and planted a vineyard than he became drunk, and his youngest son was accused of an act of indiscretion towards him. From there, things got worse, leading to the Tower of Babel. So God decided to make a covenant with Abraham. But even Abraham ended up passing off his wife as his sister to appease the Pharaoh's desire. And well, it went from there on and on as the generations progressed. Lying, jealousy, deceit, violence, it's all there. But God had placed a rainbow in the sky, a covenant, an oath to stand by humanity even as God's desire for the well-being of creation kept being plagued by the disheartening depths to which human sinfulness could descend. But God has shifted to a focus on redemption, and that ultimately led to the coming of Jesus into our world. Once and for all, destruction of sin and evil did not work. It turns out, that it is forgiveness that has within it the power of transformation, not punishment and destruction. Which brings us to the gospel. The gospel, according to Mark, wastes no time getting down to the essentials. In a few short sentences, Jesus is baptized, the heavens are rent, the spirit descends upon him as a dove, a voice is heard from heaven affirming that he is the one foretold by the prophets, and then immediately, we don't know how, but he is thrust into the wilderness for 40 days. No narrative whatsoever about what happened to him during that time other than that Satan tempted him. There were wild beasts and angels waited on him. Nothing more. No temptation to turn stones into food. No dare to jump from ridiculous heights. No allure of power. Nothing. I really don't think Mark would get a very good grade for narrative development in this gospel. Then, just as abruptly, we learn that John the Baptist has been arrested and Jesus is back in Galilee, taking up his ministry with this line that sets the stage for the rest of the gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, the good news that, John, that Mark's gospel is going to reveal is the incredible wow that is God's claim upon creation, each and every one of us. The length and depth God is willing to go to help us to start anew, over and over. Not through destruction, but through forgiveness, all the way to the cross, assuring that even death will not be the last word for us. Mark reveals the bare minimum about Jesus' time in the wilderness, and yet it's enough. We know that Jesus has broken Satan's power. As Jesus begins his ministry, demons are no match for him. Jesus banishes them all and heals those caught up in their snare. And John the Baptist's death foreshadows where the gospel is headed. Jesus is going to die. But unlike John's death, 
Jesus' death will usher in the way of salvation and eternal life for all people. Mark's gospel is spare and moves forward with urgency. Of the 59 times that the Greek word for immediately is used in the New Testament, 41 of those times is in the gospel of Mark. Along this rapid path to the cross, Jesus cast out demons, healed those with afflictions, and taught the way of servanthood, humility, and generosity. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you, for to those who have, more will be given. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. And of course, Jesus' summary of the commandments. The first is this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Following Jesus is a radical reorientation of our lives, a repenting of that which is worthy of punishment and destruction and an acceptance of God's mercy and forgiveness, forgiveness that has transformation at its core transformation that will lead us in forgiving others and in taking on the ways of servanthood, humility, and generosity. Some years ago during Lent, I visited a church in Bolivia that was a mission to the Aymara people. The Aymara people are an ethnic group from the high Andean region of Bolivia. Many Aymara have moved to the lower region of Santa Cruz seeking better lives. What they often find is prejudice and even greater hardship, for although the climate is harsh in their region of the Andes, they at least have land on which to produce sustenance, basically grains, legumes, and tubers, about all that will grow at that altitude. It's a pretty harsh life, especially in the winter. The church, as modest as it was, was an oasis for these people. The congregation was very proud of their one-room brick church with its concrete floor and its windowless windows that released the hot jungle air. The front rows of chairs were preschool sized for the children with rows for the adults behind them. A guitar and a drum were the worship accompaniments. If you needed to go to the bathroom, you left the building for a separate three-sided small brick structure minus a door with a toilet bowl, no seat, and a bucket of water for flushing. What has most stayed with me was the abundant hospitality and joy of that congregation and a young boy who got up to speak during the service. He spoke with poise beyond his years about how much the church meant to him and how eagerly he was looking forward to his baptism into Christ. He shared what a difference the teachings of the Bible had made in his life in the way he treated his friends at school, his siblings at home, and in the decisions he made. It was quite a testimony from someone so young. This week, I heard the Reverend Dr. Thomas Long, Professor Emeritus of the Candler School of Theology at Emory University, call baptism a new citizenship. In baptism, he said, we renounce one sovereignty to embrace the customs and laws of a new sovereignty, namely God, as revealed through Jesus Christ. This Lent in particular, he said, he is reflecting upon the significance of his baptism and this change of citizenship, desiring to re-ground himself in his Christian faith and baptismal identity. And then I read a piece by the Right Reverend Robert Wright, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta, who said something similar. He wrote, our first allegiance is to God as we understand God in the life, ministry, example, teaching, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Which is to say, despite the increasing complexity and velocity of modern life, we refuse to allow the corresponding bewilderment, 
to drive us to the blasphemy of self-sufficiency or rank tribalism. Bishop Wright suggested that a good thing for us to give up this Lent is contempt, and that our spiritual discipline should be to fend off incivility. It is contempt, Bishop Wright said, that has become the new practical consensus-building American ethos. To fend off incivility, he said, is to acknowledge, repent, and forsake contempt for neighbor in public and private conversations and thoughts, including social media. This is not, he said, about politically correct lips, but about the work of the heart. Civility, he said, is about the dignity of others and our commitment to the humility that seeks an abundant future for all of God's children. This is about transformed hearts, spiritual maturity at the local and cosmic level. At our core, no matter where we are from, we all want the same for our children, a hope and a future. We are not a human race, but a human family. A young Aymara boy displaced in Santa Cruz from the highlands of the Andes who finds identity, belonging, and direction in becoming baptized into Christ. A theology professor who is spending this Lent regrounding himself in his citizenship through baptism as a follower of Jesus. An Episcopal bishop who challenges us in the spirit of Lenten repentance to give up contempt, and to take on the spiritual di discipline of fending off incivility. These all bring us back to God's rainbow, God's covenantal sign of forgiveness, not destruction, is going to be the way forward. That God is committed to us from everlasting to everlasting. And that just as it seems that more rainbows have been appearing more often, so it is that God can be counted on to be with us through this journey of life, and most especially when times are challenging. Amen.
Thank you, Manny. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers during the season of Lent are Form 4 from the Book of Common Prayer. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond here our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. And in the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Calvary Episcopal Mission in Kaneohe and the Reverend Dustin Berg, priest in charge, and spouse, the Reverend Heather Hill. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. You may be seated for the announcements and birthdays. We have a few. Um, there should be copies of the February newsletter on the welcome table if you would like a hard copy, help yourself after the service. Also, just a note, this was in the scroll for those of you at home. Um, in response to the extreme weather in Texas and the southern states, Episcopal Relief and Development has a special fund to assist. If you would like to contribute to that, you can go to their website and make a donation that way. Or if you prefer, you can write a check to Episcopal Relief and Development and mail it in. Um, during Lent, we very often have mite boxes, you know, so you can put your coins and bills in during the season of Lent, and then we return it at the end of Lent, and those monies then are split between Episcopal Relief and Development and Episcopal Migration Ministries. This year, because of COVID, we don't have boxes, but we encourage you to make your own box, and then just, you know, collect your money during the season of Lent, and at the end of Lent, we'll give you the addresses, and you can decide if you want to go 50-50 or how you want to do it uh, as a donation to Episcopal Relief and Development and Episcopal Migration Ministries.
There are also uh, Lenten devotional offerings that are listed in the newsletter, either the hard copy or online. Just go to the website, church website, and you will um, find the February newsletter. And in that newsletter, there are devotional, online devotional offerings. Bible study every Wednesday, 10 o'clock by Zoom. If you'd like to join us, you are most welcome. Uh, talk to me and I'll send you the link. Jazz Vespers posted by 6 p.m. on Thursday and a moment with music with Dr. Epping every day uh, by 6 a.m. and then on demand through the rest of the day. If you need a getaway, Camp Mokalaiia has two weekends. Uh, there was one in February and two more coming up, one in March and one in April. Uh, they do all of the physical you know, distancing and sanitation things to keep everybody safe, but it's a chance to be up on the North Shore and just relax. So if you are interested, take a look at the bulletin. Birthdays. We have a number of birthdays this week that we're aware of. Maybe there are others. Today is Lisa Kyle's birthday. So Lisa, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lisa. Happy birthday to you. Have to sing when it's on Sunday. It only happens once, what, every seven years as it goes around? Uh, Monday, we have Janelin Uehara and Junko Kobayashi Uetake. And then Tuesday, we have Connor Allen and Kobe Chun. And Saturday, we have Ernell Lum. So it's Lisa, Jonalyn, Jun Junko, Connor, Kobe, and Ernell. So the prayer is printed in your bulletin this week. It's on page six. You are invited to pray along with me. And those at home, also, uh, you'll see it on the screen. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Lisa, Jonalyn, Junko, Connor, Kobe, and Ernell, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And, of course, this is when we usually have the offering. We have offering bowls at the doors where you can place your offerings, or uh, you can certainly, at home, either go to the website and make an electronic uh, gift or mail your offering to the church office. And, as always, we thank you for your continued support of the ministry of this church. I invite you now to enjoy a musical meditation, uh, an interlude, while I go and wash my hands for Eucharist. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your words and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. You may be seated. I will come to you and drop a wafer in the palm of your hand. Please hold on to it till I return, and we will all share in the bread together.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now comes our departure time, so...